I was uh, reading in, in 3 John, and uh, I just want to, I, I have a, just a few notes there and some things that I'd like to, like to share uh, with you concerning uh, 3 John and, and uh, what the Lord says there in 3 John. Uh, to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. I think it's interesting, you know, that John actually addresses this book to, to Gaius. It, I shouldn't say this book. It was a letter, you know, a personal letter. And he addresses this to, to a man named Gaius, whom we really know very little about. There's a Gaius mentioned in different books of the New Testament, but we have no way of connecting whether or not this was the same uh, Gaius I mean, I could write a letter to Brian, right? And it could be two of you in this room. And, and we're a pretty small group, right? So, you know what I'm saying? Gaius was a very common name in, in uh, the Roman times, in, the, in this first century. It was a very, uh, a very common name. So, uh, the Gaius that is mentioned in other New Testament books may or may not be the same man. We really don't know. But John... Uh, addresses this to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Now, this is a scripture from this tiny little book that is well known, isn't it? You've heard this scripture, I am sure, many times. And this is a scripture that really has got to get, we've got to get this down in our heart and down in our soul deep. Because look, sometimes life throws curveballs, you know? I play baseball. And you know, a, a, a curveball isn't that hard to hit if you're ready for it. A good hitter will hit a good curveball every time if he's ready for it, if he knows it's coming, right? But we say life throws us curveballs. Why? I pitched when I played baseball, and I loved to throw the ball at batters' heads. Yeah? My curveball. I'd take something off of it. I'd throw that at their heads. They start backing out, and it's down over the plate. I used to throw it three and two because I could throw a strike every time with it, just about. Especially if you knew you had an umpire, you know, as you're 13, 15, 16, 17 playing ball, the strike zone's a little higher than what it is in the majors. You know, the major leagues, the strike zone in the majors is the same as in the CBAA, eight to 10 year olds. It is the same according to the rule book. Chest to knees. Any Thread of the ball touches any corner of the plate. That should be a strike. But in the majors, they shrink that thing down. Now, why am I talking about baseball? You know, I don't know, because I love baseball. In the majors, they shrink that strike zone down so that it's about here to here. Top of the knee to here, you know. Maybe they'll give you a little higher once in a while, but not much. Right? But the rule book says it's the chest. That's here. Letters. Letters of the uniform, you know, up here, right? And knee is the bottom of the knee. I, I, I also used to umpire baseball. I umpired men's hardball, and I umpired uh, kids, all, all levels, really, of kids' baseball. And I would tell the coaches, right at, when they'd come out to meet at the home plate, I'd say, look, I'm a pitcher's umpire. You tell your guys, get in the box and swing the bat. Cause, and, and I would tell them. Any thread of the ball touches the plate from the bottom of the knees to here is a strike, period. So don't argue it. Go read your rule book. Now, I would tell them that at the start of the game. I was an arrogant cuss one night. <laughs> Thank God God got a hold of me. I didn't umpire when I was, I don't think I was umpiring when I was a believer. I think, I, I think it was before those times. <laughs> Thank God God got a hold of me. <laughs> Beloved. I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health. So why was I talking about baseball? Someone remind me. Life throws us curveballs. That's how I got there. <laughs> Life throws us curveballs, right? Doesn't it? Brian, you didn't expect your knees to be suffering pain with your knees. No. Life throws curveballs at us. It does that. 
Life throws things at us that we're really not ready for sometimes. Not prepared. We're not prepared to hit the curveball. We're expecting the fastball three and two. Maybe a, a, at most a, a cutter or, or a split finger fastball or something like that. You know, but not a curveball. But we have to get this scripture in us. If we believe God's word, then we must believe that God desires to prosper us. Now, I know, you know, a lot of people get upset at the, quote, prosperity preachers, right? And, you know, I'm, I've never been a prosperity preacher, and I'm still not a prosperity preacher. But the truth of God's word is this. He's for us, not against us. He wants us to prosper and be in good health, be in health, even as our soul prospers. He wants us to prosper. Now, we, we need to uh, look at this a little bit because, see, this is, you know, we can very easily get out of balance. You know, if you turn your TV on and there's an evangelist on there, uh, or, or a preacher on there telling you, send me some money and I'll send you this, uh, the, the, this uh, olive oil from Israel and it's blessed beyond blessing, you know, and etc. Turn your TV off, find another preacher. It's not the right guy. Trust me. You, you understand what I'm saying? The, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, you know, we have to have the, the proper understanding and the proper balance of prosperity and what God desires for us. God, we have to understand he's for us. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. So what does that mean, to prosper in all things? It means to prosper in every way imaginable. It means to prosper spiritually, physically, emotionally, and materially. What happens to those uh, uh, prosperity preachers? They've gotten that out of balance. That's all. They've gotten it out of balance and gotten into the material end of it. Which is always going, you know, where we put material things ahead of uh, other things, it's always going to put us um, in a, a tenuous position, let's say, for lack of a better way of, of saying that. So, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Just as your soul prospers. So what does it mean that that word prosper is a Greek word, uh, eudo, and it's E-U-O-D-O-O for those that are into those things. And it means literally, listen to what it means, to prosper. God desires us to prosper and it means to help along the road. To help along the road. So as we travel along the road of life, we're to prosper in all things. God wants to help us along the road of life to help prosper us in all things. It means to succeed in reaching. To succeed in reaching. Reaching what? Your destination. Your destiny. Whatever it is and whatever that may be. My destiny and your destiny may be closely linked, uh, or then again, they may not be. They may be different. And they probably are different, right? Our destiny, God has a unique destiny and plan for each of us. So, but his purpose in all that is to prosper us and to help us along the way, to help us to fulfill our God-given purpose and to find our destiny, to prosper us. Again, in every way, spiritual, physical, emotional, material, in every way. 
And, and God has, you know, we, we, I said that the prosperity preachers, they just get this out of balance. If we focus on any one area more than all the others, we're going to get a little, you know, out of balance, right? What happens when you get out of balance? You fall. Yeah, you can fall. That's a good point. That's what happens. You get out of balance, you what? You get hurt. You fall. I mean, I can remember years ago, I, I can remember being in, in, in church when we were first Christians, my wife and I, and, and we were first believers, and, and the pastor was preaching on tithing. Nothing wrong with that. Good message. Great message, in fact. But some people in the church were going out and giving their uh, house payment in, in tithes and offerings. And, and expecting somehow that God was going to make that up for them. Well, if God told you to do that, well, then by all means do it, and he'll make it up for you. But if God didn't do that, if God didn't tell you that, then that's just foolishness. It's not understanding the message of the gospel, not understanding the uh, truth of, uh, 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 of God concerning finances. And... You know, again, please don't get me wrong. I believe uh, thoroughly in tithing and giving offerings, etc. Uh, and I believe that God um, tests us uh, in, in ways financially to know that he has our heart. Because truth is, if he doesn't have our wallets, he doesn't have our hearts. That's just the truth. You know, it is, it is the truth. But... In all ways, God wants us to prosper. Now, what do you think of all the ways you could prosper? What do you think is most important? Spiritually. Spiritually. Yeah. If, if, you know, a person, listen, a person can prosper physically and be in good health. Right? A person can prosper financially, be a millionaire. And a person can prosper in their soul, in other words, emotionally, right? And still die and go to hell, which is the ultimate failure. Ultimate lack of prosperity. Not even a cold drink of water, right? So a person can prosper in every way. And this is what the world does. It's what the world focuses on, prospering in every way except spiritually. And even, even many in the world will get into yoga and voodoo and whatever else, you know, I don't know, whatever else, whatever other things are out there except coming to the one true God and surrendering themselves to him. They'll talk about walking in the light. They'll talk about love. They'll talk about all of those things that sound grand and great. But who are they submitted to? The truth is no one but themselves. God wants us to prosper even as our soul prospers. Our soul is linked to every area of prosperity that there is. God clearly wants us to prosper. Let's get that in our hearts right now. Let's understand that God, God is not more for somebody else than what he is for you. He's for you. He's for me. He's for each one of us. He's for us. He wants us to prosper and to do well, to prosper and to be in health, to be in health. There's something about that, that word for health. We think of health, we think of physical body, right? So I, I, wanna, I want you to think for a minute, you know, can someone be prospering if, if they're not in good physical health? Could my wife be prospering? She's not prospering in physical health. 
she can prosper in other areas. And yet, let's be honest, I mean, let's be honest, the uh, areas are all interconnected to some degree, right? How many of you, you, you have dealt with or deal with at some time or another physical ailments, and what does that do to your mental state? It pulls it down. It, it can lead to depression and to struggle emotionally. And, and because your, your physical body and your soul and spirit are all interconnected, right? It's all interconnected. It's not, you know, this and this and this all separate in there in, in your body. They're all connected. They're all interconnected. Your spirit, many times I think preachers have done us a disservice. They, uh, we have over the decades and, and over my lifetime, I've heard much preaching. You know, we all have this God-sized hole, you know, in us. It's our spirit being, you know, and, and God has to fill that and all that. And we almost picture our spirit like it's a, a, about this big in the center of us, somehow occupying that space that our heart occupies, right? Well, that's not true. Holly's spirit looks like Holly. Brian's spirit looked like Brian. <laughs> no, he's a good-looking chap. <laughs> he's a good-looking chap. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Your spirit looks like you. It has arms, legs, feet, fingers, toes. Looks like you. Your spirit man. When Jesus, see, Jesus' spirit is, 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 he's living in his immortalized spirit body, but it's the same kind of spirit body you're going to get. He's living in his right now, seated at the right hand of God the Father, right? But after the resurrection, when he showed up in the disciples where they were in, in that room, did he have hands and feet? Did he wiggle his toes, say, touch my feet, check my hands, you know, check them, look the holes, you know, right? Your spirit is not, you know, it doesn't look like Casper, just kind of tail off at the end. You know what I mean? It actually has legs and feet, you know? It, it, it looks like you look. Now, just think of the best you that there could ever possibly be. That's you. That's you. Amen? Yeah, uh, you know, God wants us to prosper even as our soul prospers. He wants us to be in good health. Here's, here's what I, one of the things I want us to see about all of this is that uh, divine prosperity, it's not momentary or monetary, uh, but it's an ongoing progressive state of well-being, of, of um, um, success and well-being, and it's balanced in all areas. And the only way that we can get to that, see, I was talking a minute ago about, you know, Pastor Angie. She's not well physically. She struggles physically, and it affects other areas of her life, Right? You know, it's, it affects people spiritually when they're not well physically. It's, it affects people emotionally when they're not well physically, right? So all of these things are interconnected, our spirit, our soul, our body, our emotions. All of them, God wants to be in good health. But what I wanted to mention this morning is that that word health, we, we always look at that and think of physical health and well-being and all that. That word actually has a very interesting meaning. I, I want you to flip back to 1 Timothy chapter 1. Just go back a couple of books. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 1. We'll start at, uh, let's start at verse 8. But we know that the law is good if, our, if one uses it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law, he's talking about the, you know, the law of Moses, 
that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and insubordinate, for the ungodly and for the sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murderers and fathers of murderers, and, and, and murderers of fathers and mothers and manslayers, for fornicators and sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers. And if there is any other thing that is contrary to good health, that word that is used there, contrary to sound doctrine, is the same is a word translated in 1 John for good health. It's the same word. And numerous places in the New Testament, that word is translated sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. Right here is one, right? Where, where the Bible says, you know, that the law is, is you know, for, for those that perpetrate anything contrary to sound doctrine. The law is given for them to show what is right. Look at 2 Timothy 4.3. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Uh, let's look at verse 2. Let's start there. Preach the word. Paul is admonishing Timothy. 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4 and verse uh, 2. We'll start there. Paul's admonishing Timothy. He says, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and all teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure. Sound doctrine. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. Haven't, haven't we done that in the world today? Oh, I swear any idiot can, if he has enough money, can get on TV and, yeah, yeah, can, can do, you know, be a life coach, can be whatever, you know, and I'm not saying all life coaches are bad. Um, but what I am saying is that, Anybody that, that can dream up any theory uh, or come up with any idea or any um, uh, so many ungodly things are propagated on our television sets. People pay thousands of dollars to get in to see Jonathan Edwards channel the dead. Yeah, to channel devils. But the, 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 you know, they'll say, oh, you know, he, he presents this as he's talking to their, to their dead ancestors or their dead mother or their dead brother or whatever. People pay thousands of dollars to go in and see him. And he's only one of many, 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 many. You know, nowadays you pick up your phone and dial a psychic, Right? Oh, and those psychics, man, they'll give you all kinds of great readings. Right? What is all this stuff? You know, even if, even if some of these people truly believe that they have a gift, and even if they say that their gift is from God, they are deceived. Why? How do I know that? Because it's a counterfeit of the gift of the Holy Spirit of prophecy. It's a counterfeit of the gifts of the Holy Spirit of words of wisdom and words of knowledge. It's a counterfeit. It belongs to the enemy. I further know that no matter how many people say that Jonathan Edwards or the woman, what's the blonde haired woman that uh, uh, does the same thing? Anybody know? Uh, blonde haired woman, she's on TV and she does the same thing as Jonathan Edwards and people pay thousands of dollars to go and, and see her. Yeah, from New York. She's from up New York somewhere. I can't think of her name. But no matter how many people though, no, will say, oh, they helped me so much. That, that does not 
change the fact that God forbade what they are doing. God forbade it in Scripture. He said, don't talk to the dead. Right? Now you remember, you remember Saul who went to the witch at Endor? Yeah. Wasn't there a planet named Endor? Yeah. Uh, now, you know, I'm not one who says, oh, you should never, you know, uh, all the TV shows or all the, you know, whatevers, uh, that, oh, it's all uh, of Satan and all of that. But, but I do want you to think a little bit about how television and movies mainstream the satanic things into the lives of, of our culture. They mainstream it. Let me ask you, why is it that you don't have, that there is no daytime soap opera on television that doesn't have gay characters? Why is that when there is only 2% at the maximum of, American, uh, of Americans that will say they're gay? Why is that? Certainly not because there is a true overwhelming, right? Why, why does Disney, you know, need to worry about putting gay characters in their movies? Yeah. It, it, it's mainstreaming it into our society. Our children will grow up watching that stuff and not thinking anything of it. And that's what they're after. They don't care about us. They want our kids. They don't care about us. They want our kids. They want our grandkids. That's what they want. Why do the, why do the, you know, my, you know, it is what it is, but my, my grandson at his school, my sister, or my, my sister, my daughter went to her son's school. This is a, a brethren in Christ Preschool, great preschool. They have been fantastic with my grandkid, uh, with my grandson, uh, Idubin. Little Nick can't wait to go there next year. Can't wait. But Carolyn, after uh, a mother's tea, they had a special day where they, where the mothers got to come in and have a tea with their, with their children, you know. And 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 the kids did a little program for them and stuff. Well, afterwards, Carolyn. Had to, uh, had to answer questions from Idubin about how come so-and-so had two mommies. Huh? Think about that. He's five years old, not even in kindergarten. Something's wrong with our society. We are mainstreaming this stuff. They don't want us. They don't care if the church disagrees because we're going to die. But our kids are still going to be here. Are our kids going to be able to stand up and say, hey, that's wrong? They will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, according to their own desires, their own wants, they'll heap up teachers, you know, the, the prosperity message as it's been taught in some cases, and boy, God, don't get me wrong, I believe in prosperity, I believe it's good to prosper physically, spiritually, emotionally, uh, financially in every way. So don't stop marching toward the goal of your own happiness and your own prosperity. Don't stop doing that. But realize that uh, the, the message, when the message becomes all about financial prosperity, it's, it's out of balance. And what it is, is people heat, 
heaping up teachers to talk to their itching ears, right, about the desire of their own heart, which is greed. Right? Which is greed. God's not a genie. We can't rub the lamp and get him to do what we want. Keeping up teachers will turn them aside uh, from the truth, from the sound doctrine, to, to, uh, to fables. To fables. To believing lies. Again, that word, sound doctrine, Look over at the next book of the Bible is uh, Titus. Look over there. Chapter 2. But as for you, listen, I know Paul was writing to Timothy when he said, you know, preach the word. I know that he's writing to Titus here when he says, as for you. But look, I'm using that same word. I'm saying as for you. As for you. As for all of you, every one of us, as for you, speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine. So, you know, when the world is on fire... That's not the time to start preaching sound doctrine. Put the fire out. You know? Do that first. But before the world is burning, preach sound doctrine. Teach your children to love one another. Teach them what's right and what's wrong in this world. Teach them to respect their elders. Teach them to, to love their brother and their sister. Teach them to be respectful. Teach them the things that are of sound doctrine. Teach them uh, to be uh, older men to be sober, reverent, temperate, sound in faith, in love, in patience. Teach the older women likewise that they be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. Right? And you, you can read so on. There, uh, Paul writes to Titus, what is sound doctrine? Another place, that, that word for health, and prosperity, that word for health, is, is used in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse, uh, verse 3. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, wholesome words, that's that same word for health. Beloved, I, I pray above all things that I, I, I pray that you be um, in good health, that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 13. Hold fast the pattern of sound words. Hold fast the pattern of health which you have heard from me in faith and in love which are in Christ Jesus. Same word. Sound words. Sound doctrine. In other words, listen, here's, here's one of the things that I'm trying to get out this morning is that, beloved, I pray that you be 
that you prosper and be in health. In other words, that is linked to our exercise, if you will, of sound doctrine. Right? It's, it's linked together to some, in some way and in some fashion that the prosperity is not, um, how do I put that? Prosperity is a, is a result of walking in God's word and in his will in every area of our lives. Now, you know, don't, don't take that to the wrong degree because think about Paul. He ended up in jail getting his head cut off. <laughs> right? Paul in his ministry was shipwrecked, beaten, uh, stoned, left for dead, uh, caned, whatever else. John was boiled in oil, right? They couldn't kill him. That doesn't look like prosperity, does it? Doesn't look like being in, in, in health and prospering exactly, right? So don't let these things get out of balance and don't, don't let the, you know, if a preacher has a focus in a message on prosperity, that's fine. But if that's the only message, I'd leave that. Again, prosperity is good. We all want to prosper. And God is on our side. He wants us to prosper. He wants us to prosper. And, I, and I'm trying to say in many ways that this is also linked with our uh, believing sound doctrine. Walking in Him and with Him. You see, someone, someone can be sick in their body and have peace, right? Can have peace, can walk with God, can be saved, can be loving, can be all of these things. So any area... Spiritual, physical, emotional, material, they're all interlinked, right? But there's one that overrides everything. And that is knowing Jesus Christ. That is spiritual. That is knowing Him. Walking with Him. Loving Him overrides all others. The man that has everything that this world has to offer. All the finances, all the good health, and all the whatever else. Still can't buy his soul. What can a man give for his soul? Nothing. Nothing. There's only one thing you can give for your soul, and that's yourself. To him. That's the great exchange, giving yourself to him, receiving what he has done for us. Did I read 2 Timothy 1.13? I don't know if I did. Second Timothy 1.13. Hold fast the pattern, yeah, I just did. Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. Uh, Titus 1.13. I don't know if I wrote that down wrong or something. It sounds too coincidental. Titus 1.13 says this. This testimony is true. Therefore, sharply rebuke that they may be sound in the faith. That they may be sound in the faith. This is also talking, this word health, deals with the health of our, of, of our faith. It deals with the health, the vitality, and the life of our faith. 
and then Titus chapter 2 and verse 1. But as for you, speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine. For sound doctrine. Now, John in his, in his letter in 3 John, if we flip back to that again, John in his, in his letter there in 3 John, he, he addresses the letter to this man Gaius. And he shows us three different people or personalities. And he commends two of them and one he doesn't commend. Mm -hmm. He commends Gaius and he says, I want you to look over at verse 5. Beloved, he's still talking to Gaius, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and for strangers. In other words, he's commending Gaius for his faithfulness, Right? He says, you do faithfully, you're, you're, you're so faithful, and you do, you do your work, whatever you do uh, for the brethren, for the church, and for strangers, you do faithfully, uh, who have borne witness of your love before the church, if you send them forward on their journey in a matter, manner worthy of, of God, you will do well. In other words, uh, well, listen, uh, because they went forth for his name's sake, taking nothing from the Gentiles, we therefore ought to receive such that we may become fellow workers for the truth. What's that all talking about? That's talking about missions. He's talking about people who have, who have gone forth for the gospel, taking nothing from the Gentiles, but, uh, but Paul, uh, Paul, uh, John is encouraging the church uh, to send them on their way uh, worthily uh, in other words, giving to them and supplying for them and uh, meeting their needs so that they can continue uh, to march this gospel of, of Christ throughout the world. I wrote to the church. John says, I wrote to the church. Now notice he commended Gaius, but look what he says about this guy, Diotrephes. He, I wrote to the church, but Diotrephes, who, who loves to have the preeminence among them, does not receive us. This guy, Diotrephes, he's, you know, he's lifted up in pride. We actually, John says he wrote to the church, right? S scholars believe that, uh, that this Diotrephes, you know, got the letter and tore it up or threw it away or whatever, didn't let anybody uh, see it, you know? Uh, because Why? Because he loved to have preeminence among them. He was lifted up in pride. Therefore, if I come, I will call to mind his deeds, which he does, prating against us with malicious words, and not content with that. He himself does not receive the brethren and forbids those who wish to, putting them out of the church. In other words, teaching people not uh, to support missions, missionaries, traveling ministers, or any of that. Uh, and he's putting people out of the church for being generous uh, to others. Beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. He who does good is of God, but he who does evil has not seen God. Now, then he goes on, he says, Demetrius, now that's another guy, that's the third guy, has a good testimony from all. A good testimony from all. and from the truth itself. And we also bear witness, and you know that our testimony is true. So here's these, these three personalities, three hearts, different, different men, different hearts. And John commends the two who are faithful, who are giving, who are loyal, who are generous, but the one guy that's selfish and lifted up in pride, etc., John doesn't commend. In fact, he, he uh, uh, scolds, if you will, or um, uh, berates in, in that way, if that's the proper uh, word. Uh, but he instructs the church concerning uh, that guy. Concerning that guy instructs the church. He says, if I come, I'll, I'll uh, take care of this problem myself. But he, he instructs the church, and in all of this letter, he is showing the church how to prosper. 
He's showing us how to prosper. He's showing us to endure sound doctrine. What does that mean? You know, it means to live our lives according to the word of God. In places where our thoughts don't align with his thoughts, he's not going to realign scripture and he's not going to realign what he's already uh, established. It's, it's, it's us who need to realign and to align ourselves with God in, in all areas, to align ourselves with him. And know this, no matter what our, our earthly circumstance, no matter what we see in our earthly circumstance, he is for us. He is for us. Not against us. He's for us. Loves us. Amen. Amen. Father, we love you. We honor you today, Lord. Lord, we ask that uh, according to those uh, prayers that we prayed earlier, Father, we pray, uh, just want to pray again for Brian. Father, we just uh, rebuke the, the uh, uh, pain in his knees. We speak to his body and command it to line up with God, with God's will, God's word, uh, with, with the message of God, the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The message that the blood covers us, that, that, uh, that Jesus died for our healing. We pray, Father, in Jesus' name for Brian, for his, his knees, for uh, Nicole, Lord. We lift up her and, and her knees and pray, Father, that you would bring healing to these two. And for Pastor Angie, for her knees, Lord, that you would bring strength and healing. In the name of Jesus. Father, for every other physical need that is, is um, among us, we pray in the name of Jesus. I pray for uh, little Idubin. He's been having uh, headaches, has to go and have an MRI. Uh, Father, we pray for him right now in Jesus' name. We rebuke these headaches right at the very cause. Father, we, whatever that cause is, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. We command his body to be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you for your great love and mercy toward us. We thank you that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We love you, Lord, and bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, if you need prayer, you come forward. We'll be happy to pray for you for any reason that you may desire.